Uh, welcome everybody. For, uh, we have a next Open Virtualization Portal webinar. Today my special guest is Jagosław Stakun. Hello. Hello Jagek. We just Hello. Uh, you know, spoke that we've been working in IBM 10 years ago. It yeah, was something like that. That's when so, we met, yeah. Yeah, so time, you know, passed time really, goes really by. Yeah. Time goes, goes by. Uh, we'll try in, in the next 30, maximum 40 minutes, speak about the OpenShift and our goal to um, take uh, our attendees from you know from the starting point. Yeah, so we, we don't start from the very beginning. Yeah, here. start from the very beginning. So we don't know actually anything about the containers. So this is yeah. the first uh, series of the webinar. So hopefully, if we have a good votes, we'll come back and uh, and talk about uh, much more advanced. Um, Definitely, we should. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's get started. Few words about you, my friend. Okay. So yeah, it's you. Not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> now it's better. Uh, okay, so I'm Jarosław. You can call me Jarek, Jaro, depending what's easier for you. Uh, I work for over six years now for Red Hat as a solution architect. My main mm -hmm. focus are um, middleware technologies and recently everything around containers, which at Red Hat means OpenShift container platform. Okay, everybody see on a photo that you're working in a Red Hat. It's, yeah. a, it's a really beautiful shirt. But still with old logo. Old logo? Yeah. No, but we, we couldn't have one because Yesterday was officially? No, I no. think it was 1st May, but nevertheless. Okay, 1st May. So we need some time to catch up. And you're working on C, yes? So not only in Poland? Yes, I do, yes. Okay, lots of work in the OpenShift world? Oh, definitely. We have, now it's like one of the key topics for us. So we are doing our best to serve <laughs> our customers. <laughs> <laughs> About myself, um, I'm running the company called Stower. Um, from the OpenShift perspective and the Red Hat perspective, we do build in the data protection solutions for this kind of the uh, platforms, uh, but also in the free time, uh, I'm playing with, with my band, with my two bands. I love playing the guitars and being in the mountains uh, with, my, with my family. You can find me, I'm quite active on LinkedIn, uh, as many people saying that, you know, I'm, you know, jumping out from the refrigerator. But uh, if you would like to catch me, just send me the private message on LinkedIn. So, Jagek, Jago, Jagosław. Uh, <laughs> 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 Depending where you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, everybody's saying that the, the containers is a shining, shining star right now. Yeah? So, what was your definition of the containers? Actually, the nice thing about the containers is that it really depends who you are and what is your interest, the, the answer might be different. So if you look purely from the technology standpoint uh -huh. of view, it is just a way how you package your application and you deploy it and run it very quickly and efficiently. But if you are, for example, operations guys, this uh -huh. might be for you a way how you can consolidate and automate your infrastructure. And if you are more like on the management level, you have more business, you are more uh -huh. business oriented, then it might be for you the way how you develop uh, new ideas, how you uh, implement DevOps or uh, the new ways uh, of, of, of building the, the applications more efficiently okay. and, and, and in more flexible way. So if I'm more app guy, so it's all about to de faster deploy. Yeah, if packaging I'm, and yeah, packaging. Yeah. If yeah. I'm an IT guy, it's all about the consolidation. Yeah, it's consolidation, automation of your infrastructure. So, but yeah. what about the virtualization, guys? They're saying, you know, there's many topics about, shall yeah. we virtualize or shall we containerize? You know, people say that this is containers are something that competes with container with uh, virtualization. In my opinion, this this is just another layer that you build, you can mm. build on top because okay. because you know, virtualization is great to uh, optimize your infrastructure, uh, your servers, the utilization of your servers. Containers are more about speed of deployment and efficiency around so the... So we shouldn't say uh, versus, we shouldn't think about yeah. to even, even combine it. Yeah, I think so. That's uh, at least this is also my experience that those technologies typically they coexist. Uh, my friend right now, Martin Kubacki, is on the Red Hat Summit and he's really keen to see the Kubevit project. So, you know, this is a t totally opposite way how yeah, to virtualize yeah. in the containers. D but th this is something we can discuss probably <laughs> on one of the, you know, subsequent. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's, let's go yeah, forward. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, so containers typically are, you know, the starting point. Uh, then the next thing, the next big thing is how do you 
build the infrastructure to manage your containers at scale. Uh, and nowadays, if you if you look for a solution for that to that challenge, you will probably sooner or later uh, meet uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so Kubernetes is a, a orchestration engine which uh, basically can manage your containers uh, environment uh, or your landscape at mm -hmm. scale. Uh, but Kubernetes is just kind of engine, so it is like you know heart of the of the platform, uh, and basically the the, the 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 full platform you can see on the slide, uh, it con contains much more uh, much more f I call them functional blocks. So okay. you see here in the middle we have two blocks uh, with Kubernetes, so the Kubernetes control plane and execution environment. So this is a pure Kubernetes, yes? Yeah. So okay. this is the this is the pure Kubernetes. Of course, Kubernetes is a software, so it needs an infrastructure to run. So you have on the bottom you see the uh, the servers, uh, networking, storage. Uh, also on the top you see on the top left hand you see the load balancing layer. So these are all the Mm -hmm. uh, you know infrastructure components that are needed by Kubernetes to to run, and on the other side there is a lot of tools to to manage your containerized workflow workload. So you have here another block uh, where, where you can see the applications, and then all the infrastructure that is needed to effectively build mm -hmm. and deploy your applications, and then to to uh, to, to monitor, to aggregate the logs, uh, and all those blocks. Uh, all those blocks you can see, uh, these are functional blocks, but there is one more uh, component uh, which is not really functional, but it's more, uh, but it's more uh, like uh, cross uh, cross-functional thing, which is a security. Uh -huh. This is something what we cannot like uh, un underestimate. So you know, if you want to put all those blocks together uh, and you want to do it in secure way to follow the security standard to make the system really secure. Uh, it's not that easy. So, mm -hmm. uh, and this is basically where really OpenShift comes into the picture. So, so if you're comparing the Kubernetes environment with the OpenShift, you're all always saying that it's all not only about you have more blocks in yes. in a whole, but also it really you, you, you take you, you're saying they we cannot un underestimate the security. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so one of the packages inside. Well, you know, security is cross component, so it spans all the blocks. So it is very important to have, you know, to have this address here. Okay. And this is basically what is uh, OpenShift all about. So if you if you if you recall all those blocks, if you put them together, uh, and and you remember about all the security standards, this is where you where you get the the OpenShift basically. So OpenShift it consists of four four layers, like you can see here. It all starts with the operating system. Which of course in in our case is Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux. Then we then we run uh, Kubernetes. So depending on the OpenShift version, we will run different versions of Kubernetes. And then th then on top we have all those tools, all those uh, functionalities which I mentioned before. So for both application deployments, for for builds deployments, and also for um, monitoring uh, so log aggregation. So um, to take in short, you're saying that. It should be much more easier to deploy the application using the OpenShift than the native Kubernetes. Yeah, it will be because the third-party applications. It yeah. will be because you have all those blocks put okay. together, okay. so you don't have to so build. You don't have to think about it how to put it. Put yeah, exactly. You don't mm -hmm. have to think about it, especially if if security is your concern. You don't have to d deal with that. You get just you know one system that covers all those functionalities, and you just focus on building, deploying, and running your applications. Okay. Uh, and then on top we have uh, uh, also back, sorry. no no it's okay okay uh, and also on top uh, we have uh, the, the huge library of uh, container images that you can uh, use to build and deploy your own applications because it's quite similar like in visualization so we have an image and we have a runtime so the same thing here uh, we provide images uh, where we have where we have different technologies as you can see on the slide starting from the you know uh, different uh, languages that you can leverage uh, to, to run your uh, to build your application to develop and build your applications databases uh, and, and all the middleware stack and also there is uh, basically we are of course we are compliant with the uh, OCI and with Docker, so you can really run any kind of uh, images uh, available on the market uh, on, on this platform. 
and then we uh, we we move on to just to quickly see how what what really is uh, OpenShift from the the architecture point of view. So we can see uh, in order to deploy OpenShift, you will need basically a bunch of servers. Sorry. Um, well. There are two kinds of servers. So you see the big block master. So this is the control plane of the cluster, and then you have worker nodes, and these are the uh, basically the, the servers where you will uh, run your uh, containerized applications. Uh, OpenShift can be deployed anywhere where uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux can be deployed. Mm -hmm. So this could be either physical, virtual, or, or cloud environments. So what was the favorite uh, flavor in uh, on a VMware, on a physical servers? Uh, from from my experience in general, I think that the, the virtual environments are a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Because you know you you can leverage your skills around the infrastructure management, and then uh, when you grow, at some point, typically uh, customers when they grow, when they get more experience, they are moving uh, slowly to towards physical environments. But typically, you know, virtualization is I think good okay, starting so point. So the starting point should be the virtualized. Then, if we grow in and get better knowledge, going into the physical environment. Yeah, this is at least my mm -hmm. experience. Okay. Of course, some experience, some some customers also prefer to start with some public cloud. So, then yeah, you don't have option. But you know, this is like different story. Uh, also, it's lots of. Microsoft is saying that you can run your OpenShift on Azure. It's so lots of Definitely, you know, yeah, information yeah. about it. Even if you follow the, 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 the summit conference, which is now in taking place in, in, in US, the, the, the largest Red Hat conference, y you might have heard that the new announcement about um, OpenShift managed service running on top of Azure. OK, no, no, no. New okay. thing. OK, thing. new thing. New thing that has been announced uh, like yesterday. Um, Okay, but but you know, OpenShift is not only about the servers; it's also about the networking and and the storage. So we have also, uh, as part of our OpenShift, uh, the, the the software defined storage and and software defined networking. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I would like to give you a very quick introduction to uh, to uh, and show you later in the demo how you can quickly deploy a new application uh, in OpenShift. So. Uh, as I mentioned before, what we need, we need, of course, the container. So it means that you need to build an image with that container. Uh, so also we will need a, a place to store uh, our images. And, and this, this component is called image registry. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, it also uh, provides you the, the versioning functionality. Uh, then the next thing is, uh, is a pod. So basically pod is a kind of wrapper uh, on, on top of containers, so in, in OpenShift, in Kubernetes, in, in, in reality, this is the, the the main unit of deployment. Mm -hmm. uh, so in in OpenShift, so you can see one pod can have a multiple. Yeah, exactly. So there is one too many relation between a pod and and containers, and there are good reasons for that. Uh, so if if one if if, cont if multiple containers they run in the same pod, they share the context, so they have the same you know networking, the same storage, the same memory. So the processes that are wrapped in containers, they basically they see uh, each other as they would be deployed on the same server. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, we have a uh, networking uh, in in OpenShift. So uh, each pod gets some uh, the IP address uh, in in the software defined network that that spans OpenShift cluster. And in order to deploy, uh, in order to deploy, the to configure how OpenShift should deploy your pod, so what images, uh, how many replicas, uh, what metadata, what storage, and so on, we have a configuration uh, object called deployment config, uh, which is which is required to to create a pod. But I will show you; it can be generated very easily during the demo. And the next thing here is the. Uh, so we have two uh, network layers. First one is called service layer, and with this service layer, uh, you can com you can implement the communication between the pods. So you can see here that if there is one pod that needs to be to communicate with the other pod, it will go via service. Uh, service is purely network uh, related object, so it has IP address, the uh, DNS name. Uh, so it can be easily resolved by uh, by one pod uh, to another. And the next the next layer uh, which is uh, needed typically is a routing layer. So with routing layer you can implement the uh, ingress uh, from external 
um, f from external uh, systems uh, which are running outside of uh, OpenShift cluster. So if you want to expose one of the service to the to the public network, let's say, uh, you, you define a route where you specify the, the host name of, of the specific route. And the last thing that is needed uh, is a project. So with projects, you can uh, group uh, or isolate uh, pods uh, in a logical uh, manner. Also, projects are the main uh, way to implement the multi-tenant environment in OpenShift. So with projects, you can isolate uh, not only the users, but also the networks, uh, the resources. Uh, you can uh, attach specific posts or projects to specific nodes in your cluster. So this is the way how we implement multi-tenancy. And this is basically what I would like to show you now during the, uh, the demo. Okay, so let's grab the question till the, uh, on the end. Right now, let's move to the demo. So I will stop sharing my screen. And I uh, will start. Yep. Okay, so I hope you can see now my yeah, uh, login good. screen. So uh, I will use uh, Web Console, uh, which is also part of uh, OpenShift. Uh, and I will show you how quickly and easily you can deploy a uh, containerized application uh, in OpenShift. And also I'll show you uh, a few other nice features. So first thing, if you remember, uh, we need a project. So I will create a project uh, just just for for our demo. Uh, then we can uh, we have multiple options how we will uh, deploy containers uh, to our application. So uh, we can leverage here uh, the, the the catalog where we have a template of different kind of applications. Uh, but in our demo, I know what image I want to deploy, so I will just select uh, the name uh, of the image. It is simple PHP application. Uh, with that, uh, when I specify the name, uh, the, the, the server will, will search for the image that, that meets the name uh, in the registry, uh, image registry. Uh, and now we can deploy uh, the image. Uh, this, should, uh, this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, process so you can see here that it has already started uh, and th there was a couple of things that has happened in the meantime so first of all this deployment config has been created so uh, you can see that here is the name of the container that I wanted to deploy uh, you can see the ports that it exposed and there are some more metadata that are uh, created as well we have a service here created so uh, so now other pods in the cluster can communicate with our uh, with our uh, application, but you can see there is not yet uh, any root created. So it means that at the moment this service is not reachable from outside of the cluster. So I will quickly create a root, which is also very straightforward. Uh, and with that root, uh, now I have the host name of my service and I, I can access it from the public network. So okay, so the root is the representation of actually the de app deployment that you will create it, yes? Yeah, this is the way how you, you can expose the, okay. uh, the application to the to the public network. And the application are in a different pods, yes? yes? It can be in one pod, can be in the multiple yes, pods. Yes, of course. Typically, you know, you will have one application that consists of many pods, mm -hmm. but only some of them will be exposed uh, via services and some subset of the services will be exposed okay. as a route to the public network. Because typically you have some front and back end, so typically only front end is what you want to expose. And as you can see, uh, w just with few clicks, we have deployed the application and it, you can see here it, it, it is working. So the next nice thing about uh, containers in general, but also about it is, it is specific to, to OpenShift, is that you can very easily scale your uh, application. So now let's say I want to run this uh, this uh, uh, pod in three replicas. So uh, I, I, I did the I scale it manually. Mm -hmm. You can see it has started very quickly three instances. So uh, just double click, you know, the the yeah. high yeah, exactly the icon, and you have it already three pods. Yeah, there is possibility also to automate to have auto scaling here, so that the pods will be scaled 
No, no give the job for the operators. No, we yeah, just yeah, double yeah, but double click. But, but you, you you replica, so you have a three instances, not not inf instances, three pods. Three pods. Yeah. Okay. And a nice thing about OpenShift uh, here is that you see we have these three replicas, and those three replicas they are deployed on different uh, servers uh, of my cluster. So uh, this is something what what takes a lot of time if you if you if you need to you know install your application. Uh, in highly available configuration mm -hmm. where you need to install multiple uh, servers on multiple instances of your application on multiple servers, physical or virtual. Here you just simply you know scale up and uh, automatically uh, pods will be deployed on different uh, nodes of your cluster. So okay. we, we can see here uh, the IP addresses of the of One the nodes mm -hmm. of the nodes where uh, where the pods are. Uh, deployed, so they should be different. Yeah, and you can see they are okay. Th but the major, the major thing of, of the replica is not the only high availability. I, I understand that's also the load balancing thing. Yes. So if you, yeah. if you would like to scale up, yeah, of course. I mean, the, those three pods they are uh, they are load balanced by the same service. So okay. service acts here as a load balancer. If we if we go down here, you can see okay. there are three see pods it. registered in the service and in in the root. So uh, well, th th there are you know there are a lot of options here to implement things like sticky sessions and other stuff, but we we'll mm -hmm. leave it for for maybe some subsequent uh, discussion. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is how easily you can uh, migrate uh, the versions of your application. So we have now deployment version uh, number one, so the, the let's say the initial version, and now let's say I will simulate uh, the the upgrade of our application. So in real world, this would be triggered by uh, typically by deployment of new version of the image that mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is 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 running our container. Here I will just quickly simulate that. So uh, I triggered the second build, and you can see here how those. Upgrades are happening. So, so let's imagine that we have a development team. Mm, yeah, so but just follow the screen. You see that <laughs> uh, that the the, the pods uh, are being uh, upgraded in the okay. rolling it's first one, second uh, one, and yeah, the third in the one. Ro rolling fashion. So one by one they are exchanged, and now we have uh, the second version of our application running. Of, and of course, if something goes goes down in your first replica, will not. Of distribute it to the next one. Okay. Of course, but also we can we can extend this uh, this this concept, uh, and this is the I think the one of the last things I wanted to show you today. So we you see here we have like two version of our uh, of our application, um, and uh, if we if our application is running for some time <coughs> and we realize at some point that there is something wrong and we want to roll back. Okay, so some bugs in the application. Yeah, exactly. Like that. The, you know, typically you will, you know, you will test your application <laughs> before you will deploy it. But of, of course, <laughs> of course, uh, uh, life is life. Exactly. Yeah, there are sometimes some, you know, really like edge cases where uh, when you when your application is running, you will discover something is wrong. And then uh, you can see here, OpenShift will keep the history of your deployment. So if you, you see that your latest uh, deployment is not uh, not fine, you can simply click on the uh, previous or one of the previous you have. And then you have here the magic uh, button rollback. And when we uh, when we uh, click it, you can see pretty much the thing, the same thing is happening. But this time mm -hmm. it will be it will deploy the, the, the version that you have selected to to be uh, rollback and again it, it runs in the uh, in the rolling uh, fashion so you see one by one pods are being uh, deployed redeployed uh, also you can implement here in the pods uh, health checks so openshift will execute some test after the new version of your pod is deployed and will check if this mm -hmm. test is passed and, and only then it will allow to to deploy a new version of your uh, of your uh, application Jarek, it looks it looks too easy. Where are the pitfalls? <laughs> no, no, <it's, laughs> no, this is this is this is quite new thing and okay. new idea. I think there are no no pitfalls. The biggest challenges here, it, you know, is more around the, the how you organize your your pipelines, your CI/CD. But you know, this is something that probably we should discuss on the separate uh, on the separate webcast. Uh, but I hope you, you like it and you see it's, it's quite powerful uh, technology.
Okay, so again, uh, coming back, so um, remind us what are the keep components starting from the scratch. So we have yeah, an image. So first we have the, the, the image, yes, which, yeah. which is built by developers. Then we have a, basically a container, which is a run, runtime for image. So they dev, the, actually the, the development team only cares about the image, yeah? So commit, build it, and rest should be on the, on, on the open shift side. Actually, you know, even, even builds can be, uh, can be implemented here. Okay. We have a feature called source to image, which you can leverage to uh, really build an image directly from the source code of your application. Okay. So you can even go further with the automation of your, of your CSCD part. So image, pod. Yeah, we have image, we have container, then we have a pod, which is the deployment unit here in OpenShift. Then mm -hmm. we have a service uh, where we, uh, you know, expose the uh, our application, uh, our application, or our, our, mm -hmm. our, our module in the application. Uh, but this this is exposure exposure only within the the, the OpenShift uh, cluster. Uh, then we have a root if mm -hmm. we want to expose service to the public network. And of course we have a project, yes. Yeah, so where we uh, where we separate our applications from from each other. Okay. So these are the, the the main components. There are of course much much more configuration, but they are more specific to some some use cases. So we have you have seen this deployment config here where we have a definition of, of our pod. Uh, there are some, some other as well. Mm -hmm. But these are the, the, the key, okay. let's say. We said 30, 40 minutes, and it's actually 30 minutes. So, you know, <laughs> we have a really good, good timing. Yeah, uh, I was doing my best. Wh wh <laughs> uh, what's, what do you think, what will be our next webinar? When you would like to take our attendees? Well, uh, I, think, I think, you know, in general, we, we think that you might have different uh, opinion on it, but, but we believe this is mainly a, a platform for developers and for applications. So I think the next step here, the next topic that we should mm -hmm. cover is how you implement your CI-CD process. So okay. uh, how you test and, and deploy uh, your uh, application from the, basically from the source code, from the change of the source code up to the production, what should be the flow. Okay, dog. So, yeah, thank you very much uh, for the first session. Thank you. Uh, it was the next Open Virtualization uh, Pro uh, webinar with Jagosław Stakoń. It was the first one, one of the first uh, season that will go through the, all of the OpenShift secrets. Uh, we just getting started. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, appreciate, you. appreciate your time. My pleasure. Uh, thank you. See you. And right now we'll go to the questions. So, if you have any question, just um, you, you, you can unmute or you can just uh, send send on chat. Uh, we will we, we'll be waiting a few minutes for this.